Hello friends, welcome to the class of high voltage engineering. So in previous lectures, we have discussed the various techniques used to measure the high voltages in high voltage laboratories. In today's lecture, I am going to discuss about the methods used to measure the higher currents in high voltage laboratories. So, in high voltage measurement part, I have discussed the various techniques like series resistance microemitter method, resistance potential divider method, generating voltmeters, sphere gaps, series impedance emitters, okay, the potential transformers like CVT, capacitance voltage transformers, electrostatic voltmeters, then the uh, peak voltmeters likewise. So all these methods are for the purpose of measuring the high DC voltage, high AC voltage at power frequency, high frequency high voltage AC, impulse voltages or other rapidly changing voltage. Today we will see the various methods used for the measurement of high currents in high voltage laboratories as well as in the actual power system field. So we all know the uh, different types of current, one that is the direct current, second the alternating current at power frequency and the alternating current at higher frequencies or sometimes we can consider them as a rapidly changing current or the impulse current. So to measure the DC current, you can use the resistive shunt with milliemeters, Hall effect generators and magnetic links. Whereas the alternating current at power frequency can be measured either by using resistive shunt or electromagnetic current transformers. The high frequency alternating current, impulse current and other rapidly changing currents can be easily measured by using a Rogowski coil which is known as a magnetic potentiometer, Hall effect generators, magnetic link, resistive shunt and Faraday generator or Faraday emitter. So these are the methods which you can use to measure the high direct current, high alternating current at power frequencies and the high frequencies. So in this lecture, I am going to discuss about the Hall effect generator which is not only used to measure the high direct current but also it can be applicable to measure the high frequency alternating current, impulse current and other rapidly changing current. So Hall effect generators. The operating principle is quite simple. It basically works on the principle of Hall effect which is used to measure the very high magnitude of currents. Either it may be the direct current or it may be the impulsive current. So what do we mean by the Hall effect? Okay. So if an electrical current is flowing through the metallic plate located in a magnetic field as you can see in the photograph as you can see in the video okay you, okay you can see that the current carrying conductor is placed in between of the magnetic field so when the electric current is flowing through this metallic plate which is located in a magnetic field which is perpendicular to it you can see over here that dc supply is connected to the current carrying plate and that current carrying plate is in turn placed into the magnetic field which is perpendicular to the direction of the flow of the current flowing through the metallic plate. So what exactly happens? It experiences the Lorentz force. Okay, And this Lorentz force will deflect the electron in metallic structure in a direction normal to the direction of both the current and magnetic field. So this statement defines the Hall effect and this principle is utilized to 
measure the unknown magnitude of current which is flowing through this current carrying conductors obviously we are getting the voltage value but in afterwards by using the uh, equation of this hall voltage we can calculate the magnitude of current which is flowing through the conductor so the charge displacement okay because of the lorentz force the electrons are getting deflected so as a result there will always be the displacement of charge and this displacement of charge will produce the electromotive force in the normal direction and this emf is known as the hall voltage so hall voltage you can see can be determined from this formula so by connecting the voltmeter we can measure the hall voltage okay so by having the magnitude of that hall voltage we can calculate the unknown magnitude of current from this equation so vh is equal to r into b into i upon d so if we are considering r as a constant as it is the whole hall coefficient okay so r is a constant b is constant as we have applied a dc voltage okay constant magnetic field we are using so b will remains fixed okay the d that is the thickness of the metallic plate which is also fixed so we can see that the hall voltage is proportional to the current okay so we can observe the linearity between the output and input so the hall voltage is proportional to the current the magnetic flux density and it is inversely proportional to the plate thickness d proportionality constant r is called as the hall constant okay so ultimately the value of r depends upon the uh, material that we are using for this uh, metallic plate so ultimately r depends upon the type of the material so let me show you the uh, video to understand the uh, how this uh, hall effect current transducer basically works Welcome to Sensor Electronic Technology Channel. In this video, we are going to introduce Hall Effect Current Transducer. The first thing is what Hall Effect is. When a control current flows through a thin flat semiconductor in a magnetic field, the current in the semiconductor is deflected by the action of the magnetic field, so that a voltage difference is formed on both sides of the semiconductor in the vertical direction of the control current. The voltage difference is the Hall effect or Hall voltage. The magnitude of the Hall voltage is proportional to the strength of the magnetic field and the control current passed through the semiconductor. The piece of semiconductor is also called Hall effect element. Then let's see how Hall effect current transducer works. According to the proportional relationship between the Hall voltage, the magnetic field strength and control current, we can design a device which provides a constant control current, so the Hall voltage is only affected by the magnetic field strength. In this case, we can tell the change of the Hall voltage reflects the change of the magnetic field strength. Now we know the magnetic field is generated by the input current, which has a clear proportional relationship between the magnetic field and the input current. Therefore, by measuring the Hall voltage value, the input current value can be reversed. This is the basic principle of measuring the current intensity using Hall effect elements. Now let's see Hall effect current transducer types. By using Hall effect principle to build current transducer, here come two types of current transducers. The first type is open loop Hall effect current transducer. When primary current goes through the conductor, it will generate magnetic field around the conductor. If we put the conductor through the center of a magnetic core to concentrate the field, and place a Hall element in the gap of the core, we will get the Hall voltage. Let the Hall voltage pass an amplifier to become an easy read value. The advantages of the open loop Hall effect current transducer are simple circuit, low cost, high energy efficiency, wide sensing range, low power consumption, the disadvantages are poor accuracy, poor linearity, slow response speed, large temperature drift. 
The second type is closed loop hall effect current transducer. The closed loop hall current transducer introduced magnetic field balance into open loop hall effect current transducer. When primary current goes through the conductor, generates magnetic field around the conductor, then put the conductor through the center of a ferromagnetic core to concentrate the magnetic field, and place a hall element in the gap of the core, then we will get the hall voltage. After the hall voltage is transmitted to the amplifier, the amplified current signal is sent to the secondary coil. The magnetic field generated by the secondary coil is opposite to the magnetic field generated by the primary current. After repeatedly adjusting the output current of the amplifier, the magnetic field generated by the primary current and the magnetic field generated by the secondary coil will be the same strength but opposite direction at the air gap, so that the Hall element is in a zero flux environment. When reaching this equilibrium state, the amplifier output current can represent the primary current. The advantages of the closed loop Hall current sensor are high precision, fast response speed, low temperature drift, good linearity and strong anti-interference ability. The disadvantage is that the measurement range is narrow, and the cost and energy consumption are high. Thank you for watching this video. Please click the subscribe button for our new video about current transdu- So, now I think that uh, you have understand the uh, how Hall effect current transducer basically works. So, the same uh, thing is utilized when the intention is to measure the high direct currents. So, as you have seen in the video that generally the semiconductors are used because uh, for the metals, the value of R, the Hall coefficient, the value of R is very very small. Okay, so to have the uh, better output, the readable output, normally the semiconductors are more preferable to use because of its high value of Hall coefficient. So in the large current measurement, as you can see over here, in case of the large value of current measurement, the current carrying conductor is surrounded by the ion core, okay, ion core magnetic circuit, so that the magnetic field intensity is produced in a small air gap, okay, here you can see that this is the current carrying conductor, okay, here you can see this is a current carrying conductor, which is surrounded by this magnetic core okay so when the current is flowing through this conductor the magnetic field intensity is produced into this small air gap where you found the positioning of the hall element so hall element is placed into this air gap which is having a thickness of small d and a small value of constant current okay from this source the small value of the constant dc current is then allowed to flow through this uh, through this circuitry uh, through this circuitry which is controlled by means of this RD value the resistance value which is used to control the amount of current which is being passed ok so small value of the constant DC current is passed through this element so the voltage is developed across the Hall element as you can see over here that the voltage is now we are getting at the output terminal or on onto the two either side of the Hall element that is just because of the Lorentz force because there is an uh, there is an interaction between the two magnetic fields one is produced by this magnet it may be the uh, permanent magnet or the electromagnet okay and the magnetic field which is being produced due to the flow of current through the conductor so there always be the Lorentz force and this Lorentz force will produce the deflection of the charges ok so there is a charge displacement and because of that charge displacement we are getting the output voltage at the two either side of the Hall element so VH we are getting so the value of the VH can be calculated from this formula uh, if we know the magnitude of current which is passing through the current carrying conductor which is surrounded by the magnetic core but in our case our intention is to measure the value of the high direct current ok so by connecting the voltmeter 
uh, we can have the magnitude of the hall voltage and uh, based on this uh, equation based on this formula we can calculate the value of current which is being passed to the conductor so the voltage is developed across the hall element in the direction which is proportional to the dc current that is uh, that is passing through the uh, current carrying conductor okay so only the thing which we need to have is the value of this r okay and the r depends upon the temperature high magnetic field strength and so that it needs a suitable compensation so ultimately if we if we have the uh, lower value uh, from this uh, hall element due to the deflection of the charges then we need to amplify the sig signal to uh, get the detectable output so hall generators can be used for the hmm. measurement of unidirectional uh, alternating current and impulse current also with proper design of the hall element dimensions and addition of compensating circuit the bandwidth of hall generators can be increased to 50 megahertz so such a uh, device can be used for the measurement of post arc current and unidirectional impulsive currents so they are not only restricted for the measurement of this uh, uh, direct current but uh, you can also measure the uh, post arc currents as well as the unidirectional impulse current with the help of these hall generators okay the uh, the advantage that we are obtaining is it is a non contact type okay it, it it does not need any kind of physical connection with respect to the current carrying conductor which carries a huge amount of current okay so uh, just we need to wrap this uh, uh, magnetic circuit surrounding this uh, current carrying conductor just to enable the interaction between the two magnetic fields which in uh, which can produce the lorentz force and uh, by uh, because of this lorentz force the displacement of the charge will takes place and uh, it will produce the voltage so ultimately the voltage is then uh, calibrated in terms of current or converted in terms of current by using this formula vh is equal to r into b i upon d okay so the person who is uh, handling this uh, uh, measurement technique he or she should know the value of the output voltage the hall coefficient value then the magnetic flux density value and the thickness of the plate so by having all these four parameters one can calculate the value of the current very easily so this is about the hall effect generators thank you